what is up what is up it's the one and only chelsea in the building and in today's video i am just gonna be pretty upfront and straight with you guys so this is my latest brand guide that i have created for a friend of mine who is also a client her name is michelle rivera um this branding guide has to do with her logo refresh it's her color palette it's everything that i do when i present my brand guides to my clients uh so let's just go ahead and get started and i'm going to tell you what's important when creating a design and the whole reason i'm making this video is because as a designer as a photographer as a web designer my entire job has been fixing honestly really shitty designs by other people so let's discuss why <laughs> why i need to make this video and address it and i want to address it from not only a designing standpoint but also a client standpoint okay because this logo that you see here uh in this section isn't the one that she selected but we're going to discuss the one she selected why she liked it what her job is why i designed this the way i did and just kind of divulge what's important when it become when it comes to being a designer um, especially if you're starting out because baby i'm so tired of fixing crappy mistakes but you know what it gets me paid <laughs> So to begin, let's just go ahead and jump on into this. All right, so this is my friend and my boyfriend's barber, Michelle. Um, I actually did her personal branding, photography, and logo refresh. And eventually we're gonna move into designing a mobile first website for her. Um, and I will probably make a separate video on the difference between my mobile first websites versus my online desk desktop websites and why I make it a point to make things um, different. But today we're only going to talk about the design aspect, what she chose as her actual brand um what i designed which we're looking at right here and then we're gonna go well first we're gonna talk about her original design what was wrong with it so this is the refresh design the design that she had and i'm just gonna open it up real quick the design that she had did not didn't work i'm gonna be honest it was just bad um if you're one of those designers that are starting out and you think to yourself, man, I want to make designs. I can do that. It's easy. And then you design things like this. And you say to yourself, oh, yeah, that's what a professional barber wants. I'm going to have a problem with you. So you need to do more research. You're not researching the, the topic at hand. You're not considering the, the, the audience. You're not considering the clientele. You're not doing any of that. You're just taking everything at face value that the client is telling you. And then you're saying, cool, this works. And it doesn't. When you look at this design, can I want you to think, think heavily about this. What does it tell you? What story does it give you? If you can't break this down, then it's a bad design <laughs> i'm just i'm gonna be up front it's a bad design you can't break it down you can't you can't tell me what this leaf has to do with being a professional barber you can't tell me why the circle is the way it is around the m and the j you can't tell me what this framing thing is you just you have nothing that you can tell me her business cards are pink these are pink like I don't have a photo of them I wish I had uploaded a photo and scanned them in but for this reason but we <laughs> we will discuss why you don't do that okay so 
I almost forgot, but I guess I'll say this before in case you're new to my channel. I am Chelsea, a professional photographer, web designer, and UX designer, and logo designer, and I design shit just basically for a living. Um, I love what I do. I'm all encompassing. I'm a freelancer. I mean, this is what I do. So for that reason, I want to make sure that anyone who's new to this creative market has resources that they can use and not feel stigmatized while using it. But at the same time, I love what I do and I get real offended when I see people charging for subpar designs. She's a friend of mine. I did not charge her my full rate, but I did charge her. Um, the reason is, again, she is a friend of mine. And I want the best for her. So for that reason, we're going to talk about why I made this design. And then again, I'm going to talk about the one she actually selected and, and why I absolutely hate the one she actually selected. But it's good to remember. And I've heard this before. I think I heard it. Um, I heard it on a YouTube. Nobody ever wants a new design. They want their old design back. I forgot who said it. I'll put a link. I'll, I'll write it in a box. <laughs> but it made me laugh, and I was like, "This is true. These are facts." So, this that you're looking at isn't her website. It's just a digital brand guide. I like to create digital brand guides as a way to let my clients know, "Hey, this is the aesthetic that we're gonna go for." And then it'll help me design their websites later. Scrolling down, this was what I selected as saying this was the old logo. Um, the problem, the old logo design lacked an effective purpose. The design gave no indication as to what MJ stands for. It did not encompass a purpose, nor did it stand out as a professional barber logo. A lot of people say, I don't want a logo that's like typical, but understand the reason that certain things are the way they are is so people know what industry they're looking at. Let's see, I'm trying to give an example. Taco Bell, okay, McDonald's, Burger King, all them fast food joints, they are fast food restaurants. And of course, McDonald's has the golden arch, right? You think, what does that have to do anything? McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Burger King are all much older than the new design elements of today. And so they can't change their brands. They are like literally what they are. Although the Taco Bell design has been rebranded re and refreshed a number of times, it's still a god dang on bell. You know, you still know, you still know when it's the Taco Bell. So for that reason, you know, it's a fast food restaurant. Fast food restaurant logos are pretty much all the same. And I will show you what I mean by that. So it'll say fast food logos. Very bright, colorful, encompassing reds, lots of reds, because uh, I think the psychology of colors tells us that red actually makes you hungry, which is probably why after looking up these logos, I'm actually hungry right now. <laughs> And so look at that, they all have red. Red, 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 red. And those are like different styles or there's a logo swaps. And then we have the actual ones, like, come on, come on. Like, think about it. So when you're making a design, consider, consider the audience, consider what it is that you're going for. Of course, Subway is going to have green because green is fresh. Green is nature. Subway, eat fresh, you know, and look at the S in the arrows that they're going in. Like everything has a purpose. And so when you make a design like this with no purpose, I'm like, what are you doing with your life? So that being said, I absolutely despise this design and I'm not going to say that the, the original designer wasn't a good designer. They were probably new, um, to which I will say, even when I was new, I personally refused to pay anyone for something if I wasn't going to be able to deliver. So here is the, the logo that I wanted her to select as a part of the logo evolution. I started off with scissors and then because I knew I wanted to use either scissors or shears. 
but I went with scissors because I figured that I could be able to create um, kind of an effective M out of the scissors if I was going to um, reconfigure the way the scissors are, the shears I should say, are set up. But instead, I went with a simple M and J, and then I decided to move the J closer, drop it down, and take the M, cut it off pretty much, and put the scissors as if they are cutting hair or cutting the MJ. Now, I didn't want to just leave it as MJ because her entire thing is actually MJ Styles. So when I see MJ Styles, I needed to add the styles and so I did MJ styles now what you see right here is a menu um, this mock-up is one that you can get on everywhere if you just google it it's a really popular professional barber mock-up so just look on Google for it um, I'll leave a resource down below in case you want to check it out so the MJ Styles, the Barber, and again, this is one of the images that I took for her, um, for her professional photos that I did. And then we have her color palette to which, to design the color palette, I was actually in her personal space, um, her business space, and just from having conversations with her, looking at the way she dresses, and just her overall vibe and feeling, she likes very uh, clean, things but also natural neutral tone she's very um she's a vegetarian she's a very cool like chill kind of person but also remember the industry and gold is a heavy part of being a barber like if you look up any barber logo gold just seems to be really the the thing that people are going for right now so we wanted to make sure that we had a little bit of that element in there now she didn't want hers to be like every other barber out there or a stylist because she's not a stylist she's a barber so i wanted to make sure that we at least got it in there now i know someone's gonna say but why would you put the styles underneath instead of on the opposite side you know switch these around well when you when you think about the way that the things are written you would say styles mj but think about it, it is a logo. It is not the actual name. So I wanted it to appear as if a self, like a self-containing logo. So that's why it looks the way it does. Then I have her uh, brand aesthetic, which is what I like to call these little layouts where I use little boxes to articulate the overall feeling or mood. And again, these are all images of her that I took during that time. The only thing I did was we used a white backdrop. And so I just basically removed the background and then <laughs> I was able to put her in um, all of these little settings. She might need a stamp and the reason I designed the stamp is she wants to use, um, she wants to provide gift certificates and she's very much the hands-on type of person being that she is a barber. She wants to use, you know, kind of that ink and paper style. So right underneath this, you do see the logo typography. Logo typography is not the same as the brand typography or the web design typography. And the reason I say this is as a web designer, there are certain fonts that I'm not going to be able to, uh, that I don't, that don't look right in a web design, but make for a great logo design. Amsterdam 2 is the letters that we use for this M and J. Um, it is a part of Canva and Canva allows you to actually use their fonts in your commercial designs. So if you're starting out and you don't know what to use and all these old school professionals are telling you, don't use Canva, don't use it, it's not good, it's not real design. Okay, forget them. Okay, because as long as you're able to produce something wonderful that your client likes, forget them. I use everything offered to me free and otherwise paid for. So I highly recommend that if you're new to design, you can start on Canva. Because again, once you realize that every single thing is literally a layer, a layer, a layer, 
it's easy for you to be able to create designs. So scrolling down, we do also have her, that leaf that I despise, but I want it to incorporate it some kind of way because she does have it etched in a window at her shop. Uh, another client paid for it for her. So we wanted to make sure that we included it in some kind of way. And then of course the photographic aesthetic, I would like to say that it's just me saying, hey, this is what I envision when I think about your brand. Some dark but also um clean something bold it, it, both of those aesthetics and then the font i wanted to make sure the font was not only a really good <clears throat> excuse me a really good sans serif that would work but also you know something that i could later take this font um and use it in the web design so let's talk about the design sheet actually selected and this is the brand board that she actually selected um, this one is why i changed the look of it you have the qr code you have the business card you have the the shop menu one-sided um, things of that nature and i didn't put anything on these because it was just a little heavy if you try to put every design you have on one again old logo and again what she selected and like i said i personally personally i must try to say this say this again personally personally do not like her new logo and i have i have told her um what i do with my clients is i sit them down i tell them the purpose of a logo why i recommend something over another and i still give them the option this is all her decision and for any designer it might be that the original logo was designed by someone who gave her a different option and she went with this one but I've seen the the files and that's not the case so <laughs> for that reason she felt she was tied to that to the gold leaf and so I had to make adjustments to that to the leaf in order to make it work so then I kept this the same and I did do the same thing where I used the gif gif whatever you want to call it and just threw it kind of in there just so she could see what it would look like I adjusted it in different places in order to make it work because I don't know if you notice here it's the between the s and this is actually on top instead of below so when you're making a design pay close attention to things like that and this isn't even touching so the final logo files look completely different but i'm also working on this one in standout digital which is what i like to use to present my brand boards again same brand colors nothing changed same design and again same design the only thing changes is where i put the information and then how i utilize her her logo in the design um the script I use is a little bit different than the one you see here. Um, I changed it to be the logo typography one, but technically once I change this around, the logo typography, this script is completely different than the satisfied one, um, which is what I'm gonna use for the, the, the brand board, uh, the website, the mobile first design. She really liked this apron. She's like, we're gonna get the apron. I'm like, girl, it's a mock-up. <laughs> um, and she really liked these little bags and things because she wants to provide things like that to her clients. And then of course I threw up um, the other shop menu, the back of the shop menu. I mean, the front of the shop menu that would have like her hours and her services. And the reason I like to do it like this is so that it can catch errors, catch mistakes. Like you see the full service is, is um, the font is large, but then the experience is small, but everything else is completely different. And it, it just changes, same for here, line up, shave, and then everything else, the first letter is always capitalized. So it helps me, before I send this off to the client, take a look at what I'm sending to the client so that I don't have to go back into the, the little forms and change them. Okay, so this is, like I said, the logo that she actually selected um 
but again it's all because of the original design she wanted to keep the m the j and the leaf because a client paid for um, it to be engraved in the glass at her shop and so it is and so she feels she's tied to it for that reason so if you're out here being the first designer please stop making bad designs because I have to fix them and then my clients feel that they're stuck with it and I can't do anything to change it so just make sure if you're going to be out here charging $50 $60 whatever I don't care if you're charging 10 cents if you're not going to do your absolute best, then don't do anything at all. I'm dead serious. Just don't do anything at all. All right. So I hope this video was informative, at least a little bit. It helps me to be able to catch mistakes and errors if I go ahead and share everything and you know, just kind of talk it out with you guys. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And as always, laters.